סוכה קדוש, בוקר טוב, שבוע טוב, חודש טוב. We're on a עמוד א', 51A1. We are going to, בעזרת השם, start from the משנה, and we're going to finish the פרק today and start the next פרק. Uh, the last פרק was באמת תמונים, תמונים, which was talking about התמנה. Now we're going to be speaking about the next פרק, which is basically במה בהמה יוצאה, which is basically הוצאה. So it says here like this, לא כיסאו מבעוד יום, לא יחסנו מי שתחשך. במשנה on נון א' עמוד א', third line down, it says, if right now you came and you do not cover a tavshil, you do not cover a pot during Erev Shabbat, so you may not cover it during the nighttime of Shabbat, because Atmana itself is a sur, even with something which does not add heat on Shabbat, because it's a gizira, maybe you're going to find that the pot was cold, and then you're going to come and you're going to heat up the pot and you're going to be over on Yisur of Bishul B'Shabbat. However, though, Kisau v'nitkala, if you covered the pot, meaning you did do hatmana, and then what happened was, it was nitkala, it became revealed, mutar lechasoto, you are permitted to cover the pot again on Shabbat, which means if you already started the hatmana process, and then in the middle of the Shabbat it was revealed, you may again cover it and there's no problem whatsoever. Okay? So here, um, we're going to, okay, well, I'll explain it, we'll show the pictures in a second. Now it says over here like this, You're allowed to fill up a kiton, right, which is basically a jug of cold water, and you could put it inside of a kar or a keset, underneath a keset. Right, underneath, whether it's talking about the pillow or the blankets, in order, meaning that it shouldn't get heated up. Right? Why? Because since it's made out of a utensil or of a material which does not heat things up, there's no Yisur of Hatmana. So the Yisur is only when you're doing Hatmana in order to heat up things, but not in order to cool things down or to keep it cool. So therefore, the concept of Hatmana was only when it's going to be in that case. Okay, until here we're clear? So it says here like this, okay? It says the Gemara, Amar Rav Yehuda Mashmuel, says Rav Yehuda Mashmuel, Mutar le'atmin et atzonen, you're permitted to do atmana on cold things on Shabbat in order to make sure that it stays cold and it doesn't get heated up by the sun. And the Chachamim never made a hatmana for hot things. So Amar Rav Yosef, says Rav Yosef, like Kamashman, what's it coming to teach us? Tanina, we already learned it once. Emale Adam Kiton, Shevenoten Tachad Akarot Tachad Keset. A Keset, we learned it in our Mishnah. Why are you, Rav Yudha Mashmuel, coming and teaching us? You're allowed to do what's going on with Shabbat, with Sonen. It's our Mishnah. Our Mishnah says it. You're allowed to come and put the Kiton and put it underneath the Karo Keset on Shabbat, and there's no problem. Emale Abaye, so Abaye comes, he answers Rav Yosef, Tuva Kamashmulan. No, 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 he is teaching us a lot of things. He says, why? Right? If it's going to be from our Mishnah, Havamina, the Havamina is, Hanimina, one of these words. That's only something which is not common to do Hatmana for that. Okay? But something which is normal to do Hatmana on it. Lo, I would say there is still going to be a sur to do it, even to cool it down. Kamash Malar. Okay, comes to teach us that it's also permitted. So one more time. The Mishnah comes, and at the beginning of the Mishnah was just a very important talakha, right, which is basically that if you didn't cover it during the day, you, you're not allowed to cover it during the nighttime for the Gizira, for the decree, maybe you're going to find the cold, and then you're going to come, you're going to heat it up. Right? If it was revealed, which means you did do that mana, and let's say it fell off, you put a towel, you put something, and afterwards it fell off. So on Shabbat, you could do it again. Because since you already did that Tmana beforehand, you're allowed to do it again without any problem. But the Seifa of the Mishnah, and that's what we're jumping to in the Gemara, straight away we're jumping to the Seifa, the, the latter part of the Mishnah, where the latter part of the Mishnah says is that you could do Atmana on cold, which means I could take a jug of cold water and then I could put it underneath the Karo or Keset, underneath the pillow or the blanket, in order that it stays cool and the sun is not going to come and, and heat it up, that's permitted. So says the Gemara of Yudha Mashul, says, you're allowed to do Atmana B'tsunen. You're allowed to do Atmana in cold to keep something cool, and we're not going to make a decree that maybe you're going to heat it up on Shabbat. 
as, as the Gemara says of Yosef, we already learned it from our Mishnah. What is, what is he coming to teach us? So Abayi comes and he says, no, he's coming to teach us that if it was from a Mishnah, that's only something which is not normal to do at Manayim. Right? For example, water, cold water. It's not normal to do at Manayim cold water. So therefore, since it's not normal, in order to do at Manayim cold water, to put it with uh, pillows and things like that in order to keep it warm, so therefore I would never make a decree. But in our case, where it's basically any type of a pot or any type of a food, there it is normal to do at Manayim. So I would have thought that here, if you would do at Manayim cold, it would be a sur. Because maybe I would make a decree, I would make a gizera for to heat it up. Kamashmulan, anything in cold, you could do at Manayim. And we don't make a decrees. We don't make any, any gizera whatsoever. Okay? Next, Amar Ravuna Amar Rebi. Says Ravuna, in the name of Rebi, Asur latmin et atsunem. You're not allowed to do at mana on sunem. Okay? So now, we're going to ask now a stira. Right? We're going to say, one second, right? what's going on here? Right? So says the Gemara, right? He comes and he says, as follows. He says, how could it be? Vatanya, we learned in a braita. Rebbe itila tmin et atsunem. So it's a stira. Does the Rebbe say you're allowed to do at mana on sunem? Or you're not allowed to do at mana on sunem? Remember, it's okay? So answers the Gemara, la kashia, it's not a question. He says the first one, right, where it says that it's, you're not allowed to do a tmana on cold, was before he heard it from Rabbi Yishmael Rabbi Yosef that it's permitted. But the Braita that says that it's permitted, it's after that he heard it, which means at the beginning, Rabbi used to say it's permitted. But then afterwards, he heard in the name of Rabbi Yishmael Rabbi Yosef that it's permitted. So then he retracted and he said it's permitted. He had that, Yativ Rabbi Bamar. Because Rebbe was once sitting down and he said, Asur latmin et atsunen. You're not allowed to do a tmana on sonen. Yeah, that's what happened. He went and he said, You're not allowed to do a tmana on sonen. So what happened? It happened was, is She'ilu. So he says, and then when Amalef Rabbi Mishra Rabbi Yoseh says in front of Rabbi Mishra Rabbi Yoseh, Abba, meaning my father Rabbi Yoseh, he did. He said, he did not mean it at Sunem. Amar Kvar Hurazakem. Says Rebbe, if your father Rebbe Yose permitted it, I'm Mivatel Dati because of his Hora. Right? And therefore, I'm Choserbo Latir. It's a very famous saying. Kvar Hurazakem, meaning that the elder already gave his sack, and I'm Mivatel Dati because of the elder, which means I'm, I'm annulling my own mind for whatever he said. He said it's permitted. Permitted. The Zaken, the elder, already passed him. So therefore, and he therefore was Mamatenda at all. So Amar of Papa, Papa, Papa says, Bo ure kama mechabevim ze Look how much kavod they would give to each other. Yeah, this is actually very beautiful. They're doing Sefinat Omer, we're reading this. It says, look how much kavod they give to each other. Sheilu Rabbi Yose kayam, as if Rabbi Yose was alive during that time, he would be sitting in front of Rebbe as if that he was the student of Rebbe. Okay? That's what it says here. Because of the kavod of the Nasiut, Rebbe, Rebbe Yudah Nasi, was a Nasi, was a, was a prince. He was uh, the head of Am Yisrael. And therefore, Rebbe Yosef would not be Morel Acha in front of him, even though Rebbe Yosef was greater than him. Meaning, even though Rebbe Yosef was greater than Rebbe, Rebbe was like the rabbi of the, the political rabbis. We already spoke about it, but it was, but the political rabbis, once upon a time, they used to know a lot of things. They said they used to know a lot of Torah, right? But it doesn't mean that he was a gadolador. You understand? So therefore it said that still, if he was alive, he would be sitting in front of Rebbe. But now that he passed away, right? That's what it says here. ha Rabbi Yishmael, Rabbi Yoseh, Malim HaKom He was gadol Torah like his father, and still, even his son, Rabbi Ishmael Rabbi Yoseh, was also greater than Rabbi. But he was sitting in front of Rabbi. He was in front of him, showing the kavod of the nesiut, kavod of the, the prince, right, of all of Am Yisrael. The kamar, kvaru razaken, but still Rabbi came, and he said, kvaru razaken, look, the zaken already passed in, and therefore, I'm going to be Vatel Dati to Rabbi Yosef. 
So this is just showing us the kavod of what it is of one another. That even though Rabbi Yoseh or his son, Rabbi Shmuel ben Rabbi Yoseh, were greater than Rabbi, since Rabbi was the Nasi, they were sitting in front of him, right, to give him kavod. And they were listening to him as if they were the students. However, though, on the flip side, Rabbi Yudan Nasi recognized what it is, and therefore he said immediately, I'm Vatildati, I annulled my mind. Whatever he said, that's what we're going to go like. Okay, another story. Amale Rav Nachman, the Daru of De. Rav Nachman went and he told to his Daru, to his servant, two things. At sonen, do at mana for cold on Shabbat. Ve'aytilimaya de'achim kfeil arma. And bring me during the weekday water which was heated up by a goyesha, by a goy kfeil arma, by a goy cook. Okay, so therefore there's no bishul goy by hot water. Shama Rabbi Yami, ve'ikpad. Rabbi Yami heard, and he was very makpid. And why? Why, why what was he? he was so strict? What happened? So it says, Amen of Yosef. It says, Rabbi Yosef, my tama ikpad. Why was Rabbi Yami makpid? Kiravatavid. Rav Nachman was doing these two things, like his rabbis. It says, why? Chada, number one. Kirav. So the first one was like Rav, right? Which is basically going to be, okay, we're going to explain it now. Okay, Bechada Kishwun. And one of them like, was like Shwun, which means if Rav Achman was doing like his Rabbanim, like Rav and like Shwun, so why are you upset at him? He's doing like his rabbis. What do you want? Why? Kishmuel, it says, he's going to explain. The Amr of Yudam Shmuel says of Yudam the name of Shmuel, Mutal Atminet Atsunen. You're allowed to do Hatmana on Sunen on Shabbat. That was the Gimera at the beginning of the Gimera. Amr of Yudam Shmuel, Mutal Atminet Atsunen. So therefore, Rav Nachman was like, Shmuel, you're allowed to do what's on Shabbat, on cold. So why is Rabbi Ami being makpid? And second of all, like Rav, the Amar of, you, the, the Amar of Shmuel Bar Yitzhak Amar Rav, says there's one Bar Yitzhak Amar Rav, Chol she'u ne'echal kimot she'u chai, emo mishu goi, sholen nochrim. Which means, if you could eat this without being cooked, you have a vegetable, or you have a food that you could eat without being cooked. Water, you could drink it raw. You could drink it without being cooked. So therefore, now that the goy cooks it, there's no bishul goy. And the reason why is because since I could have benefited from it normally, even without the goy's intervention, so it's not considered a significant improvement, the fact that the goy cooks it or heats it up, and therefore there's no problem with bishul goy. The concept of bishul goy was always is that we didn't want to have such a closeness to the goyim, but then we get more married to the goy or to the goya. You understand? Imagine, the goya is going to start preparing us different foods, and then this, and all of a sudden we become close to the Goya. She's a good cook. She's a good this. And then what happens? We get married to them. But to that, the rabbi said, we don't want any, any intermarriage. We don't want our generations to be destroyed, our children being destroyed. Remember, the second that they get married to the Goya, Gamarno. Right? There's, everything's finished. Right? The entire concept of lineage, the entire concept of everything. So therefore, what happened? They said, we want to protect ourselves. How do the biggest protection? Food. Food brings kirudat. Food brings a closeness, a relationship. That's why whenever a person wants to do a business deal, when he does, what do they do? They take them out to lunch. Why do they take them out to lunch? Over food, a good drink, a good food, a good this. All of a sudden, there's a relationship. Boom, you finish it. Right? You close the deal. You handshake. Same thing. A rabbi said, no, outside. Anything to do with food, anything to do with wine, obviously. Right? Wine, out. Yai nesech. Throw it out. Kamarnu. There's nothing to talk about. Say, will be shulgoy. So here he says that if right now Rav Nachman was going like either Rav or like Shemuel, like Shemuel, that you're allowed to do at Manaon cold on Shabbat. And like Rav, that even during the week, I'm allowed to take a hot coffee. I was, he asked for, um, he asked for hot water. Right? Maya de achim kfeilarma. Mayim nishtomem shulchan, who was heated up by a tabach nochri, by a goy. So it was like a coffee or a tea. So why, why was he makbid? And so the he thought that since Rav Nachman was an Adam Chashuv, right? Which means he was a very important person. Rav Nachman was Rav Nachman, you understand? So therefore, he had to be even more strict. Because then what could happen is, is that if he's going to do exactly like the letter of the law, people are going to come and they're going to start doing other things which becomes prohibited. 
right? And therefore, right, he thought that he should be makpid on these things, which does make sense sometimes. Sometimes if you see that all of a sudden, you know, the Rahman, ah, the big rabbi, he was having a tea or a coffee, all of a sudden, ah, yeah, the coffee came with a little tiny piece of cake, the coffee, you know, people, they come and they over-exaggerate, especially Amear Atzot, right? They don't know what's going on. So yeah, 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 the rabbi did it. They had no clue what was going on. You know, so they completely, they misinterpret everything that's going on. But my son actually just, uh, she actually brought a beautiful Dvar Torah to do with the Yichol Lashon to do with Moshe Feinstein. That it, once, there was a different versions of the story, but it was all the same concept. And what happened was, is that once Rav Moshe Feinstein, either it was that he had a guest come over to his house, or he went to a certain place, to a simcha. What happened was, is that he was making himself a coffee. So he went, he picked up a bottle of milk, right? He looked, and then he put it down. He took the other bottle of milk, which was a different brand, and a different ashkacha, and he poured himself the milk, and then he drank. So what happened was, is that it started coming out a big rumor throughout the entire city, right? That what happened was, is that Rav Moshe Feinstein didn't like the ashkacha of this chalav Yisrael. Why? Because he picked it up, he put it down, he didn't want to use it, he used the other one. And he used the other one, and that's what happened. So everyone stopped buying it. The restaurants, and this and that. So the owners of the company, they were all, what's going on? They started investigating until they found out what were the rumors. So they went to Rav Moshe Feinstein. They said to Rav Moshe Feinstein, Rav Moshe, why are you against our ashka? You're like, you know what? Saying it's milk. You know what? what did, you, did you hear something? Maybe we could fix something. What's going on? We're going to lose all our business. So he said, what are you talking about? So yeah, yeah, this is a story. This was saying. He said, how could that be? He said, I picked up the bottle and I looked at it because I realized it was empty. There was no milk in the bottle. So I put it down. The only other bottle was beside it. And I picked it up and I used it. It was an empty bottle. What, do you think I picked it up and I put it down because I didn't like the ashkacha? I had nothing to do with the ashkacha. But again, because sometimes people, they see something and they don't realize what's going on. So they come and they start making rumors and they start saying different things. And it's gonna, they completely could destroy somebody's business. They could destroy somebody's and everything. Why? Because they don't realize. So Rabbi Ami, he held that since Rabbi Nachman was an Adam Chashuv, a very important person, he should have been strict on himself, even on these halachot, in order that it's not going to cause other people to have a downfall. Okay? Fine. Tanu Rabbanan. We learned in a Braita. Afal pi shamru. And by the way, that was connected to the parasha because that had to do with Lashon Ra. So therefore, since it was Lashon Ra, so therefore the, you know, the, the Rebbe brought to my son, you know, Advar Torah to do with Lashon Ra, about how it could actually destroy somebody's business without even realizing it was 100% false. It wasn't even Lashon Ra, it was Motsi Shemra. It was actually completely false. It was like a whole, you know, completely different uh, picture. Fine. Tanu Rabbanam, learn Tanu Braita. Afal pi shamru, en tomnim nafilu v'davar, shenu Motsi Feve mishecha shecha. Even though we said you're not allowed to do a tmana with even something that doesn't add heat. For example, a towel. A towel does not add heat. It insulates, it keeps the heat. Right? Once it becomes nighttime, I'm not allowed to do a tmana. In bale osif, mosif. But I'm allowed, I'm allowed to do leosif hatmana. I'm allowed to add hatmana on part of it. Okay? So he says. Right, as follows. What does this mean? Kate do say, how do you do it? Bishimom and Gamaliel Omer, Notelet a Sadinim, Umeniachet a Gluf Korin. Oh, Notelet a Gluf Korin, Umeniachet a Sadinim. Which means I could take from the, the Kedira, the, the, the Sadinim. The Sadinim are usually made out of linen, or linen like uh, blankets. Umeniach, and I could put in, in, instead of them, Gluf Korin. Gluf Korin were big smichot, like big thick uh, blankets made out of wool. So obviously it's going to insulate much more. Right? We know that a wool suit makes a person much hot. Guess, or a wool tzitzit. Right? Even though it's important, you should know, because wool tzitzit is the raita, according to Malan. The other ones are the rabbanan, the tzitzit. So if you already want to do a tzitzit, according to the halacha, you should do the doraita, which is basically a wool tzitzit. Okay? So it says over here, So you take away the thinner hatmana, uh, and you put the thicker hatmana. Or, or what you could do is, you could do the opposite. Right? Let's say you're afraid that it's in the summertime and it's too hot. Right? So what can you do? And it's bubbling up. So what do you do? You take away the thick smicha, the thick blanket, and then you put the thinner one made out of linen instead of, of uh, wool. 
אוקיי? וכן היה רב שבג עומד, וכן היה רב שבג גמליאל עומד, לא אסרו אלא אותו מחם. They also only prohibited the same מחם. אבל פינה ממחם למחם מותר. But if you did פינוי, if you change it from one מחם to another מחם, you're allowed to do הטמנה, אוקיי? Um, by the way, you should know, this is the proof of the Chazonish, that according to Shittat Maran, not like Rabbi Yunah, right, this is the proof of the Chazonish, that you're allowed, that in a Christian, if it's still yet soledable, there's no problems of Bishul, which means, um, we know there's a famous Rabbi Vadi Yosef, Yalkut Yosef, that they go against the Moroccan Minhag. The Moroccan Minhag, I'm not sure if other people also had the Minhag, I'm sure they probably did as well, But let's say the children to the Hamin, the Dafina, was burning. So what are you allowed to do? You're allowed to pour, right, water, hot boiling water from the urn to the children. Now, usually if you're burning it, if you're pouring it from the urn, right, directly to the children, it's okay, you have to be careful that the urn might become meaty, right, or whatever it is. But let's say, forget about that. Forget about making the urn meaty. And you have the steam coming up. But when you're doing that, it's boiling hot water into boiling hot water. What's the problem? Yeah, there's no problem. However, the Rabbinu Yuna wanted to say that there's a problem of Idrui, that Idrui is like a Klishani. And therefore, since Idrui is like a Klishani, so then what happens is, is that it's going to become Mileshel Bishul, which means when I put it into the Klidi Shon, into the Chamin, it's now considered that I just cooked that water. Now that water was already cooked and it's still boiling hot, but it doesn't matter, right? Idrui. when it's pouring from the first utensil to the second utensil, it's like a cliche me. And once it's getting into the chamin, so what happens is, it's going to become cooked. And this is actually brought down, if I remember correctly, I think it's a chet shubah. It's um, the biur alacha. The biur alacha, in siman shim yud chet. The biur, yeah. The biur alacha, siman shim yud chet. Siv Dalet says, Im Nitztanen, I am the Mishnah Barah, that it's talking about that it's not yet so edible. Now, if it was empty to a Kalishani, Af Im Ayah Adayin Yad So Edible, even if it's going to be Yad So Edible, we could say that it's like Nitztanen, it became cold. And now there's a problem with Bishul, it's a Primi Gadim. So here it says, Nishalti Lafize. Okay, fine. So basically, that is the Shita of the Primi Gadim. And the Hovadiyah wanted to be machmir in that. So now, why is this an afkamina? An afkamina is, is because in Siman Reshun Gimel, right? Siman Reshun Gimel, here, Sif, Dalet, it says like this, Yesh limchot biyadano agim latmim bebod yom kongkum shemayim chamim. You have to rebuke the people that they do hatmana. Again, we're talking about hatmana on hot water, right? And then what happens is that they're going to put it into the pot right, that it's burning on Shabbat. So here, right away, I mean, Shabbat says, what does that mean? Because they're doing atmana. Yeah? And therefore, since they're doing atmana, it's not yet so edible. So therefore, you have to be, you have to be, you have to rebuke those people. However, though, if it was boiling hot, right, which means that it comes from an urn, it's not atmana, it's boiling hot. So then there's no problem. So it comes out that we were also doing like Shittab Maran. So the Moroccan Minhag was that it's permitted. So the question that they asked was, if you're going to tell me, right, that we're talking about that there's a problem of Bishul, right, in a Klishani, right, when we're talking about boiling hot water in a Klishani, what's the Pshat? Pinami Mecham Mecham. Why? If you are Pinami Mecham Mecham, Mecham is hot water. So you're putting from one hot water, right, one pot of hot water to another pot of hot water. How are you allowed to do hatmana? Yeah, how are you allowed? You're doing bishu on Shabbat. So Rabbi Vadia wanted to answer that there it's talking about rice. We're talking about a food, right, or whatever it is. Right? But technically speaking, right, pinam mecham mecham is hot water, right? So there's where, this is a chazonish proving to us, not like Rabbi Yuna, that there's no problem with bishu. right, in the cliche need to do with here if it's still boiling hot, okay? Fine, anyway, let's continue. So no, it's very, very important because that answers up our minhag of Morocco. I don't know what was the minhag of the Assyrians. 
Benjamin, what was the minhag for Syrians? Same thing. Like Moroccans? Yeah, yeah, we used to, boost, we, we used to like, keep the path and stuff like this. Oh, wow. Okay, Baruch Hashem. I always thought he was always going against Moroccans, but the more and the more I see, it's also against, it's also against Syrians, you understand? <laughs> I saw the same thing. I walked into Magen David one morning, into here in Magen David, and there was a bar mitzvah. Yeah. Rav Avishai Levi saying, Shovero Yivim Machni Aminim. And I remember that even though the Rav Chida says, Shovero Yivim Machni Aminim, I remember Yalkut Yosef all the time saying, if the Rav Chida would have seen all these poskim, yeah, he would have been Chazarbo. <laughs> so Rabbi Koskas comes out. He wasn't praying at the Minyan, it was a Bar Mitzvah, so it was the second Minyan. Rabbi Avisha Levi from Netivei Ezra was the Shliach Tzibur. So I told yeah. Rabbi Koskas, wow, I said, I didn't know what Syrians also say Minin. He looks at me, he goes, I think so. He opened up three Sidurim of the Syrians. Every one of them Yeah, we go, we go by the Ben Ishai, he says Zedim. Ah, yeah, he says Zedim? Yeah, Ben Ishai. <laughs> okay. So what happened was is that I, I told him, wow. I said, I always thought that Yosef was always bashing the Moroccans. <laughs> yes, so, yes, and in Syrians as well. <laughs> you know but okay. They said, they said Minim, but the Ben Ishai, he, he wrote down, as we said, Zedim. So it's mm-hmm. a okay. Ah, okay, fine. Okay. But it's, it's nice to know. It's very yeah. No, because you see, you see more and more that even the Edot and Mizrach were much closer together. For example, Tunisians and Moroccans, they're almost the exact same. Jerba were always more machminim, but Tunisians, yes. almost. And even the Syrians, many alachot with the Ben Ishchai, that he used to be machmin also, like the Ramah, or things like that, it was very similar to Moroccans. Now, because of Rav Uvadia, it became very, you know, like a distant, and you know, like there's Edot Mizrach, and then there's Sfaradim. Yes. But really, Bemet, he's wrong, because they always say, like the Sfaradim. The Sfaradim were the Spanish, from Sfarad. So that's always from the Spain and Morocco, because a lot of Morocco. went to Morocco, right? From the Inquisition, they went down to Morocco. And then you had the people that were already there in Morocco. So it was just stunning. It was very, very, it's very, you, you know, when I hear it, you know, it's, it's funny, you know, you hear it, and again, they're going against the Moroccan Minag, you know, like... Uh, <laughs> of the course, they said that they were okay. We, of, we go by the by the middle. We, we go by by Ben Ishai, whatever. You know, yeah, exactly. not. <laughs> ben Ishai. No, you're right. So one of them was Yiru and Enu. In our Bet Knesset in Morocco, they used to say Yiru and Enu every single night. In Morocco, Yiru and Enu was every single night. I'm um, here in the Bet Knesset They only used to do the Motzei Shabbat. So what happened was is Rav David Yosef came. And he told, he told us, he gave a shield in front of a whole crowd. And he said, if you only do it Motzei Shabbat, it's a problem. But if you do it every single night, so then it's okay. And you could do it. So I instituted back the original Moroccan Minhag, which is still the Moroccan Minhag until today, in Gibraltar, in Toronto, Venezuela, every single night. So that's what we do it every single night, Yiru and Enu. And the second one was Brachot before the meal. That yeah. the video Yosef brings out, it's a Minhag Yafeh. It's a Moroccan minhag. It's a beautiful minhag to make brachot before the meal. And they have little tiny quantities and they make brachot before it. And that has in mind everything else in the meal. And you're being marbe brachot, there's no problem. Because you're doing it so we have more brachot on Shabbat. So he actually, and, and I have it on the recording, because some people came of the Syrian background. They said it was a ta'ut, it was a mistake. The Moroccan <laughs> Or it was for Shalom Bait. His wife is Moroccan. So they, he wrote it in. In Hagi for his wife, Kilu. <laughs> I went and I said, when he came to Miami a little while ago, I told him, Rav David Yosef, Bechavu, speak about it. Is a good minhag or not a good minhag? So he spoke about it and he said, yeah, yeah, it's a minhag yafe, it's a good minhag. And he spoke about it and we have it on recording, Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem, it's good. You know, and I didn't pay him either. <laughs> I didn't pay him either. So Baruch Hashem. There you go. Okay, fine. So let's go back to the Gemara. So here it says that pinami mecham mecham. So what is the nafkamina? For example, I could take my children from one pot, transfer it to a second pot that's called pinami mecham mecham, right? That even in talking of food or a liquid, I right? put it into a second liquid, and now I could do hatmana on the second liquid, on the second pot, even though the first pot was not done hatmana. Okay. 
So says the Gemara, Hashta kure mekamaki le artuchi kamartelach. The reasoning why is, is the fact that I transferred it from one pot to another pot, I was cooling it down. So now I'm not going to suspect that I'm going to come and heat it up. Right? Because remember, the first pot, the difference between Klishon and Klishonun, the difference is, is that the, hall, the walls of the pot, they heat it up, they warm it up. So now what happens is, is that if I transfer it to a second pot, it's going to cool it down. So if it's cool, going to cool it down, I'm going to suspect that you're going to come and you're going to heat it up again. Obviously not. So there's no problem. Okay? Next. If you did atmana with something which could be taken on Shabbat, which is not mutzeh, or you did atmana with something which cannot be taken on Shabbat, but it's mutzeh, and you put on top of it something which is nital b'shabbat, you could take it off and put it back on. Okay, so therefore you could do that. So here, it's got the... Right here, you have the pictures. You have here and over here. So here it says that you... Right? You were taman vekisa, you did a tamanan, and you covered it with something which could be taken on Shabbat. So this and this, the kli on the top, and these things on the side, they could be taken on Shabbat. So we said, notelu machzir, you could pick it up and put it back down. You take off the utensil, you could put it back down. However, though, if you did a tamanan bedvar shehanital, the Shabbat vekisa bedvar shehanital, that means you did a tamanan here, the aleph, which is on the two sides, was a tamanan bedvar hanital b'shabbat. But you did the kisui on the top with something which could not be taken off on Shabbat. Okay? Which means there's the, the sides and then the kisa is the kisui, the cover. So the first case was taman v'kisa v'davan v'nital v'shabbat that you did a tmana and the kisui in the sides and the top with something that you could take on Shabbat. Or you did the var she'en on nital v'shabbat with the tmana but the kisui was with something which is nital b'shabbat. So you could take it off, pick it up, right? Pick up the pot and you leave the sides there. Right? Because you're not touching it. What? Right? What happens though? In taman v'kisab devashen nital b'shabbat. What happens if you did a tmana and kisui with something which cannot be taken on Shabbat? Or taman bedvan nital b'shabbat. You did a tmana with something which could be taken on Shabbat, but the kisui cannot be taken on Shabbat. So imayam megaleu mitzato, if, right, it says over here, if you could be, um, if it was that you didn't completely cover it on Shabbat, okay, right, which means it wasn't completely covered on Shabbat, so then what you could do is, is you could grab the part of the pot, which is megule, which is revealed, and then you could pick it up from that, and you're not touching the mukse. Bim and if not, bim and if not, eno notel machzid. You cannot, um, you cannot take it. So this is a case. Here. This case here. Since I could grab this part of the pot, which is revealed, and I'm not touching the mukse, so I could pick up the pot in that, in that fashion. If it's completely covered, so now I can't do it anymore. Why can't I do it anymore? Because now what's going to happen is, is that I'm actually taking the mukse itself. So it's prohibited. Okay? Rabbi Yudah, man, Rabbi Yudah says, Neoret shil pishtan daka hareu kezebel. So, right, the Rabbi Yudah says that small pieces of Neoret of pishtan, of uh, linen, okay, it's like fertilizer. Okay, and therefore it's mosif heaven. It adds heat, and I'm not allowed to do atmana even during the day with it. Okay, manichin mecham next. The Brayta says, manichin mecham al gebe mecham. Okay, I'm allowed to put a mecham on top of another mecham, meaning one pot on top of another pot, in order to, um, we're talking about urns, right? Remember, mecham is always of hot water, right? Okay, one pot of food on top of another pot of food in, in order to keep the heat in each one of them. However, though, right? however, though, right, it says over here, um, no, sorry, I t- you take out the avallo. But you are also allowed to do a kedera on top of mecham or mecham or meaning a pot on top of an urn, urn, urn on top of a pot, 
v'tach et pia bevatzek, and you're allowed to put on top of the pot, right, matzek, right? So he says in order to, and there's no problem of hatmana. So here it says that you already needed, you needed the, 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 the batzek, the dough, erev Shabbat already. So now that I needed the dough of Shabbat, I'm allowed to put it on top of the pot on Shabbat in order to keep it, and there's no problem with it, manah. Okay? Now it says, You're not allowed to do so in order to heat up the pot. In order to maintain the heat. So you're not allowed to eat it to, to add on to heat. You're allowed to maintain the heat. Just like you're not allowed to do it on hot water on Shabbat, so to you, you're not allowed to do hatmana on sonen. But Rebbe, again, the same Rebbe that we just mentioned above today, you are allowed to do hatmana on sonen on Shabbat. You're not allowed to crush. You're not allowed to crush whether it's going to be um, snow or, or the hail on Shabbat in order that you're going to get the liquid coming out of it, because that's no lab. Okay, so it's like a melacha. You're allowed to put it in your cup. You're allowed to put the ice or the snow or whatever it is in your cup. And we're not going to suspect for a molid. Right? Because it's, it's going to happen on its own. So technically speaking on this, this is where the halacha comes from. That there is a, if I remember correctly, there was a machlok at the I would have to look it up again, but somebody just asked me recently. And I remember I, I told them I was going to look it up. For sure, you're allowed to put ice in your cup and there's no problem because it's not that you're doing some, you're crushing it, you're doing an action to crush it. And even though the liquid is gonna melt and it's gonna make everything cold, there's no problem. However, the question is, can I put the liquid, the ice in the cup and then the liquid on top? Some people prohibit that on Shabbat. And the reason why is because you're doing an action to melt the ice in your cup. Because when you pour the, the drink on top of the ice, you're physically doing an action to melt the ice in your cup. Some people want to say that you don't have kavana to do so, and even if it's happening, it's the will go back forth, back forth. But, you know, it, it, that's the, the question or not. Okay, so if you want, you can remind me, I'll, I'll tell you guys what Allah is, we'll, we'll check it afterwards. But that's just, you know, where does it come from, from this Allah over here? Hadran Allah Bametumani. And we finished the chapter of Bametumani. So now we're starting the next panic, okay? With what can an animal go out in the Rishut Rabim, in a public domain? Obviously, we're talking about that he's going into the public domain without um, an eruv. And what, what can an animal go out with or not? What can he not go out with? So, Yotzea Gamal, Be'afsar, Be'naka, Be'chatan, Be'luvdikim, Be'prumbiya. So it says over here like this, the Gamal, the camel, is allowed to go out with an afsar. So the afsar, benaka b'chatam. So I'll show you the, um, the afsar is a kesher b'shebirosho. So which is, afsar is aleph. The aleph is the kesher b'shebirosho. Okay, the knot on his head. That's the afsar. The naka is nikivata gamal b'chatam. It says over here, which is, I think, bet, correct? Chatam. Yeah, that's a bet. You see the old bet? It says over here, naka is a female gamal. She wants to become fitting for masui. They put in this nikivata gamal b'chatam in the, in the nose. And also in the Nekavim, the Gemara is going to explain what it is. But right now it just says, oh, this Hevel Hafsar is the, 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 the knot. Okay? The Prubia is this. Is the next picture. Everyone sees the next picture? This one. Okay? Okay, next. Um, the Luvdikim. So how do you translate that in English? The first one, the Afsar, it's just a knot on its head. 
it's it's a halter halter h a l t e r halter okay halter and the naka how does he translate it as just the hole uh, the, the naka no no he didn't translate the femal dromedary with a hatom no no hat, he didn't was going to explain okay and Luv de Kim, how does he translate the Luv de Kim, no, no translation. Luv de Kim with a prumbia. Prumbia. With a prumbia. Okay, so they could go out with a prumbia. The sous, the, don, the, the, the horse, could go out with a sheet, which is basically, it's like a collar. It's like a collar, right, which is tied around its neck. Yes, a collar. A collar. Very good. That's this one. The horse coming out with the collar. Okay. And then it says, right, or any type of an animal, which is normal to go out with a collar for beauty. For example, uh, the, the dogs or other small things. So they could go out with a collar and you could actually take it out as well. No problem. Okay. You could actually do on the sheet of the Bale Chaim if they became Tamemet. Meaning, imagine right now you had an animal that became Tamemet, and you want to purify the animal. So you have to sprinkle from the paraduma, the waters of the paraduma. So when you sprinkle the waters of the paraduma, you could sprinkle it on it. If it's not a chatzitza, it's not a, there's no problem. Vetovlan also, in Kuman, you could even make them do tevila as well. They could go into the mikveh with this as well. And it's not, you don't have to actually move it. It's not considered a chatzitza. It's not considered a pasek. I have sek, an interruption. Okay? Says the Gemara. My nakachat bachatam. What does it mean, nakah bachatam? Amar Rav Rachana says Rav Rachana, naketach ivarta bizmama de parzila. We're talking about a nakah levana, a white nakah, whatever. I don't know how you still translate that. Bizmam shel barzel. Ah, a nakah is a type of an animal. So the nakah. It's the f- f- female dromedary. So female camel, that's what it is. Because here it says the camel. Yes. Nekivata gamal. So basically the female camel, so the first one was the gamal. So the male camel could go out with the, the afsa. The female camel could go out with the khatam. Right? The luvdekin, we still don't know what the translation of that is, could go out with the prumbia. And the horse could go out with the collar or any other type of animal. So that has a collar, could go out with the collar. So here... The female nakalivana is a white female camel could go out with a zamam shel barzel. I don't have any picture. Okay. Nakalivanot, because it says they're very simple, to, they're very easy to run away. So because of that, it's not just enough to put an afsar to hold them, but rather they need like mamash, something like a collar or something, a barzel. Ah, no, sorry. It's something that goes in the nose. That it's was, a nose ring. Nose it's ring. Like a nose it, ring. Here, that was a that was a picture up here. It was the bet. Here. Why? Because if it was just gonna be right, something on the top, it would get out of it. It would just get out. So what do you need? It's like a mash nose ring, which would clamp it, and therefore it was gonna try to run away. You grab it, yank it, it, unless it's gonna take off its nose. You know, it's gonna hurt. You understand? So therefore, it's uh, important to know that. Yeah, if you remember, this is actually a very big musar. You remember the musar that we gave on uh, Dumbo the elephant? Jumbo, Jumbo the elephant. You remember? It was uh, Stefan? What? <laughs> <laughs> Stefan brought it afterwards. No, no, the, the, t-shirt, the, the, the t-shirt has, has with the Dumbo. With the Jumbo, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> what happened? If you remember what happened was, as we said, that uh, they asked, um, I forgot now the, the company, I forgot the, the they, for, they, they asked him, right, how could it be that he was such a huge elephant? How could it be that he was trained? He was tied to a little tiny uh, rope. Mamash, a little tiny rope he was tied to. And he never went, he never ran away. How could it be? So we brought down, um, that it was something brothers, I forgot. It was a, they were a famous circus, the something brothers, I forgot now. Okay, whatever. So they said that what it was, was, is that um, they said that when he was very, very small, 
he came to the circus, right? They, the only thing that they had, they didn't have a big rope. They had like, a, you know, the clothes lines. So they tied him up on that. And every single time he was fighting to try to get out. And he was hurting himself because he was trying and he couldn't get it. So he tried and tried and tried until he basically gave up. So he said, even though he grew up and he became 20 times the size and he could get out of anything, right? In his mind, he stopped trying because in his mind, he got accustomed that this rope, I can never break it. So since I can never break it, I will never be able to get free. So Chachamim come and they say, that's what we have to try to get ourselves out of. Why? Because many times in life, when we're younger or when we're, like, we think that we're incapable of doing certain things. But we don't realize that once we get to a certain age or certain mental um, you know, capacity, we could do much more. But we still become like Jumbo the Elephant, that even though we become strong and almighty, right, we still become like the weakling and like, like the weak elephant that he can't even get out of a, a little tiny chain link and then nothing. But he's so strong. That's what happens. So that's what that was the most sad for ourselves, that we never actually really fully uh, utilize our potentials to break through what's really been meant. We could be able to do much things. So here, they would put like a mamasha nose ring in order to make sure it doesn't go off free. The next part was Luvdekim, the Prumbia. We're talking about Luvdekim, uh, right? Again, which we don't have the translation. They were able to go out with the Prumbia, which is like a, a harness, okay? So it says here, Amar Avuna Ravuna says, Hamara Luba, the Paga de Parzela, a Hamor Lubi, a Libyan uh, Hamor goes out with a, with, a, with a resin barzel, with a metal type of a harness. Okay? Okay, fine. Yes, this is the Hamor of Libya. Yeah, that means the, the, the donkey of Libya, the Libyan Hamor goes out with a metal harness. But the border of Egypt. Which one? Like, you know, by uh, Misraim, on the border of Misraim and Libya. Yeah, that's what it says here, yeah, the phone, no, yeah. I know it's in sign. Yeah, I guess, I guess they needed it because it was also stronger, I guess. Yeah, and, you have also the Caprese, the Caprese from Cyprus also. And sometimes... Oh, Cyprus. No, but now we understand the name. Because now it's Louv de Kis. Louv is Libya, right? And uh, so Louv de Kim, right, or Louv de Kis, whatever it is, they go out with this, I mean, this Hamor, it goes out of the park of the Parzela. Okay, next. Levi Shadar Zuze Lebe Chosai Le Mizman Le Chamra Luba. Levi sent money to Be Chosai to buy for him a Chamor Lavan, a Chamor of Libya, a Libyan donkey. Saru, right? He put the money. The Shadu Le Saru. The Rolls Royce. Yeah, exactly. That's the Rolls Royce coming from Libya. <laughs> yeah? So they sent him Seorim inside of the Tsori Maot, right? Which means. They gave him back the money and they gave him back barley. Le membra to say, the nigra de chamra sare, the psiotav shel chamor, and le fis seorim. Which means, if you're going to come and give a regular chamor seorim, right, he could become just as strong as a Rolls Royce. Meaning, if you're going to come, you're going to take a regular car, right, you're going to have your, your Toyota, your Honda, whatever it is, and you're going to put it seorim barley, it could become the same Rolls Royce of the Libyan chamor. That's what they were trying to tell him. Okay? Basically, it says over here, it was very, very far away from Bavel. Therefore, they didn't want to buy it and send it to him. So what they did was, is that they just went and told him, buy a chamor in your place, give it a lot of barley, and then it's for sure going to be very, very strong. Okay? There's not going to be a problem. Amr of Yudam Shmuel says, Shmuel, achlifin lifne rebi shel zu It says the Talmidim, they asked the following, Ed Rebi, What's the, the, the opposite case? A gamal mechatam v'naka be'afsa. Can you go out with a gamal with a regular male? I apologize, my voice is terrible. Can you go out with a male camel with this nose ring and a female uh, camel with the afsa, with the, um, the knot around its uh, head or not? Can I go out with that on the Shudra or not? Okay, meaning I switch the order. For the female, I needed the nose ring. For the male, just around the head. But I did the opposite. Am I allowed to go out in a shoot rabbi with it or not? So says the Gemara, Naka be'afsaloti ba'ilecha. For sure, the naka, the female donkey with afsar, is not a safek. Kevin de lo mintera, baby, since it's not mishtameret, masuyu. It's considered, I mean, since it's not watched with it, so therefore it's considered a burden. And you're not allowed to do that because you're carrying it. 
right? It's carrying it. It's considered a burden, but it's not really keeping the animal safe. It's carrying it. So, what is the safek then? The safek is only gamal b'chatam. It's only with the, with the male with the nose ring, because that's an extra protection. It's a higher level of protection. My, what's halacha? Given the sagile b'afsar, since it's enough, afsar, masuyu, it is considered a masuya burden, carrying on Shabbat, because you don't need it. You don't need such a substantial, uh, you know, protection, right? Or maybe, or maybe I'm going to say, so consider a masui, because it's got extra security. So Amar Lefanav Rabbi Yishmael Rabbi Yosei said Rabbi Yishmael Rabbi Yosei in front of Rabbi, Kach Amar Abba, this is what my father said, Ya Arba Be'emot Yotso Be'afsar, four animals are able to go with an afsar, Hasus, Ha'pered, Ha'gamal, Ha'chamor. Okay, Hasus, the, the horse, the pered is the, is the pered is the... Mule, mule. The mule, exactly. Which is in between the horse and the, and the, and the donkey, correct? No? That's what it said. It doesn't say it? Yeah, it's no, mule is a bread between donkey and horse. It's kilaim, almost. Yeah, it's kilaim. That's what I remember. Yeah, the um, any hybrid between the donkey and the horse, right? any hybrid, any type of a connection with the donkey and the horse becomes a mule. Right? That's a pered. So a sus, a horse, the pered, hagamal, the camel, and the donkey. These are the four which are allowed to go out on Shabbat with an afsar. So you see from here, you're allowed to go on with a lemute mai. What is it coming to exclude? Lav lemute gamal bechatam. Is it not coming to exclude that a gamal cannot go out with a nose ring? So therefore, the Kavanah Rabbi Yosei was, these four animals are kept or watched with an afsar. And therefore, right, they only could go out with an afsar, not with a chatam, not with a nose ring. And so the gemana, no, no, the mute nakab afsar. It comes the opposite. A naka female, cannot go out with the afsar, but she could go out with the nose ring, right? But it doesn't say the other way around. So it's the matnit atana, so therefore we don't have a proof anymore. So the matnit atana, luvdekim and gamal yotzim be'afsar, also luvdekim and the gamal, so again, the Libyan chamor and the gamal, the camel, they're allowed to go out with an afsar, right? That means even though we said that the luvdekim go out with a frumya, which is uh, the, the harness, Harness, yeah? The harness, yeah. Okay. Halter. The halter. Okay, the halter. Okay. So it says, right, the... So it says over here that even though I could go out with this, so it says that was the, what's teach, come teach you, that you're allowed to go out with it. So I answer the Gemara, tonight, it's Machlok Ketanayim. En chaya yotza besugar. An animal cannot go out with a sugar. What is a sugar? Here a sugar is a collar, which is a of collar. rope. Of rope. What is it a collar of a rope. Hanani Omer, Yotzeb Sugar. You could go out with a collar of a rope. Uchol Damar Mishtamer, or anything which could keep it, which could safeguard it. The Maya Skinan, with what are we dealing with? Ilema Bechayag Dola. If you're telling me with a Chayag Dola, a big Chaya, big wild animal, Misagile Sugar, is it enough a sugar? The other day, sugar is nothing. I can imagine a sugar is stama collar of a rope. It's not enough. We're talking about a chayaktana, a small animal, right? For example, uh, uh, here it says a nimiyara chulda, which is like, um, um, uh, I forgot how you translate it in English. Um, how do you translate the nimiya? I don't think they translate it either. No. No? They just say uh, they don't have it. Uh, ordinary cold is enough for a cat. No, that's but what, what is the after. small the small animal? How does he translate it? Uh, a cat. A cat, okay. It's it's uh, in in breaklet. Uh, in
Ah, in parentheses, yeah. Mm. Okay, fine. So it says over here, Milo Sagila. Brackets. He says, is it not enough asuga, asugar? So el alav, chatul ikabinayu. Ah, so here it is. The chatul, the, the cat is the difference between them, which means the chatul is a chaya, which is a machloket. Can you take it out with a sugar or not? The truth is very interesting because usually cats you don't see on leashes. You see dogs on leashes. You don't see cats on leashes. I guess it's because people don't have a lot of cats as uh, pets. No, the, the Persian cat, always they put him in la lace. Ah, yeah? I've never seen yes. it. Okay. Okay, very good. But, but people keep cats as pets? Uh, at home only. Ah, only at home. They never take them out? No, never go out. Okay, that's why. Yeah, because you never see it. I'm saying, you know, I don't remember ever seeing a cat on a leash. But, uh, you know, okay. Tanakama Savar. So Tanakama holds Kevin the Sagila Bemitna Bealma. Since it's enough just to stam a little rope, so Masuyu. So it's considered a burden. Chananya Savar, Chananya say, no. Kol Natiluta Yeterata, Lo Amni Masuyu. Anything which is an extra protection is not considered a Masuyu. So Amr Avuna Barachia Mashuel says, Avuna Barachia Nei Mashuel, Halacha Ke Chananya. That extra shemira is not considered a masoi. Levi bered Rav Huna bar Chaya bar Rav Huna havu kazabolcha. So Levi, the son of Rav Huna bar Chaya, and Rav Rav Huna were going on the path. Kad me chamara de Levi le chamara de Rav bar Rav Huna. So the chamor of Levi went in front of the chamor of Rav bar Rav Huna. Okay, so they were both on the path, and his chamor went in front of him. So Rabbi Ravuna, right, was greater than him, so he became upset. He was like, you know, who does he think he is? His animal is going in front of my animal. What's going here? As if that he's doing it with Havana, as if that he's greater than me. You know what I'm saying? So Amar, Levi said to, his, to himself, I have to tell him something. I have to tell him something in order that he doesn't get upset at me. Because my animal is going right? That he should understand that it's not the Chavana, it's just going in front. It's not the Chavana. So Amar Lehi told him, Chamor Shasakav Raim. When you have a Chamor, that is Asakav Raim, which means that he's a Mardan. What's a Mardan? Which means he's a, he's a rebellious person, a rebellious animal. You go and say like oh, this. Stubborn. Which one? Stubborn. Stubborn. You go and say, Maul HaTzeh B'Prum B'Shabbat. Can he go out regular with a son on Shabbat or not? So he wanted to show him that his chamor is stubborn, is like a rebellious. So therefore he's going ahead. Like I'm trying to make him stop. He just goes ahead. What am I going to do? So I'm not doing a bechavana that I'm going ahead of you. Shalom. So what do I do with this animal? Can I go out with it on Shabbat on regular Shabbat or not? Amalei, he told him, This is what your father said in Neymar Shmuel. Shmuel said in you're allowed to take out anything extra, which means any extra protection, you're allowed to take it out. And there's no problem. There's no enough coming in your question because you're allowed to, and there's no problem whatsoever. Okay?